Good morning, everybody. Sorry for the delay of the long queues today. Uh, my name is uh, Jerome uh, Remmers, uh, director of the True Animal Protein Coalition, a coalition uh, formed by NGOs and a lot of companies who think it's really important that food products have the true price, including all external environmental costs. And today we give um, a, a press conference about CO2 labeling at this uh, COP28 and CO2 pricing examples in catering and retail companies in Europe. Um, so that could be a next step after CO2 labeling of food. Um, so <clears throat> I told a bit about my organization. We are 60 partners, mostly in Europe, representing one and a half million EU citizens. And um, <clears throat> What we do is uh, um, publishing reports on this topic, uh, do policy advocacy in Europe and, and uh, other countries, and also implement uh, projects in catering locations and hopefully supermarkets where people actually pay a higher price, uh, uh, in, for instance, for meat and dairy, including their external effects for greenhouse gas emissions. Like a lot of people also pay a CO2 tax for their energy bills. Um, <clears throat> so we calculated what could be the, 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 the true price of meat and dairy by calculating the environmental cost per kilogram meat, dairy and eggs for greenhouse gas emissions but also for other emissions like nitrogen and particulate matter. And this means that on average, at least in Europe, meat should become 50 or 40 percent more expensive and maybe more. Um, so we are going to tell about CO2 labeling. There's an online speaker, but uh, sh I hope she will come, uh, telling about the CO2 labeling. Uh, maybe she comes in later. Um, she is from Nutritrix, and her company uh, made the CO2 labels at the different catering locations. You can see some QR codes where you can actually see if uh, the food has a label A, B, C, D, or E. Uh, and I think also F, so F is mostly the, the meat because it has highest uh, uh, greenhouse gas emissions per kilogram. And A is like vegetables and, and plant-based meat. Um, and, um, <clears throat> but we also will tell about um, uh, CO2 labeling um, in general and CO2 pricing examples in supermarkets and um, what we've done in the Netherlands and uh, what's in the, been happening in Germany. Um, so here you can see an example of uh, CO2 labeling. Um, <coughs> but I go quickly around it. Uh, also the organization Jungo, the US constituency from the UNFCCC, worked very hard with the COP28 presidency to make this happen. And also to make sure that two thirds of all food here is plant-based, which is the most climate friendly option. Uh, and we supported them, of course, and uh, we also asked about CO2 pricing, but this was one step too far. Maybe next COP that can be also implemented. Um, <clears throat> so there is a lot of benefits of CO2 labeling. It will make people more aware about the impact of the food you eat, and um, it can also change um, consumption patterns. Um, Yes, there are a lot of uh, effects also on producers when uh, CO2 labeling or environmental labeling is obligated. Then they change to make different products in the way that their products has a good score, an A score, a B score, and not a bad score. So I think it's important. There's a lot of discussions in European countries about obligated environmental or CO2 labeling. Um, this is a very nice example of a, a large supermarket chain in uh, Germany. Uh, last summer they had one week where in all their uh, shops um, they implemented a true price uh, for nine food products including some meat products and, and milk and, and cheese and also vegan products. 
uh, where people actually had to pay the, the true price uh, based on uh, uh, environmental criteria. And for instance, a price of 300 gram of cheese, uh, what, which first was two and a half euros, now became almost uh, double the price. So this, we have to know that this is the real price because uh, greenhouse gases cause a lot of damage and somebody has to pay it. And you can calculate what is the price. But when prices tell the, the truth, then the economic the economy will have um, most uh, welfare according to uh, economic uh, theory. So we th really believe this is important that uh, uh, prices should tell the truth about what it really costs to the society and to future generations. And then people and companies make other choices. Uh, so this is an example of my country in the Netherlands. The largest supermarket chain uh, had also a similar um, uh, example of true pricing. Uh, this was the case for coffee products, uh, including milk, and um, this was um, <coughs> uh, not uh, not obligated, so like penny supermarket where everybody had to pay this uh, double price for meat and dairy, but it was uh, optional. So you could make a choice. So there were two prices. So you could say, will I pay the old price, which is lower, or the true price, which is a bit higher, and 13% of the consumers in the shops uh, paid the true price, uh, but there was more willingness to pay, so this shows that maybe giving people an option, then they choose for the cheapest option. So I think it's better to make it obligatory for everybody. Um, <clears throat> this is an example of uh, True Price and Impact Institute. Uh, Michel Scholt uh, is the director. He will also give a more in-depth presentation later. Uh, but uh, here's some examples of uh, milk, uh, eggs, and uh, some, some breads in, uh, in catering locations where also the true price gap was paid by the consumers. Um, what we did together with some uh, student organizations in the Netherlands um, two years ago in three university locations and for catering, that uh, the, the ideal situation for our organization, a true price calculated for meat, was really implemented. So at the catering locations, suddenly uh, meat products became 40, maybe for beef it was even 60% more expensive. And uh, we reduced the prices for uh, vegan meals and vegetables and fruits. And the result was that meat consumption fell by 20% during those months. And uh, the consumption of plant-based meals, fruit and vegetables increased uh, three times. So this kind of consumption patterns are in line with dietary guidelines. It should even be uh, more because we don't eat enough vegetables and fruits and we eat much too, too much uh, meat. So this can be examples also for health perspectives to guide people to eat uh, according to the dietary and planetary guidelines. Um, yeah, we hope that during the next climate conferences and maybe other UN conferences, this principle, which is already applied in practice in, in European locations, of true pricing or CO2 pricing will be implemented so that everybody in the world knows this can be done. It's really helpful to, to, uh, to realize the Paris climate goals and to, to, ha to have increasing health benefits for instance, in the Netherlands, we pay a lot of money to uh, our health care costs every month. <laughs> it's increasing every year. People get more and more sick because they eat too much uh, meat and uh, processed meat, especially uh, they eat too much sugar and not enough vegetables and fruits. And we can easily change this by changing the prices of the different food products. And the European Parliament adopted an amendment two years ago. We lobbied for it that uh, fat rates should be zero percent for the healthy products and the highest fat rate for meat products and other products has neg negative impacts on climate or the health. But the problem is this is the European Parliament, but they are not in power of fiscal incentives that are the, the governments in Europe or America or wh wherever. So this has to be uh, a key element for the climate conference that maybe not this year, but next year we start with uh, pricing food products in the, in the right way, which helps uh, a lot for the climate goals. 
So uh, the con con conclusion is that uh, this is the first conference. I'm really happy that uh, there was a breakthrough for uh, climate and food here at COP. Yesterday, uh, a declaration was signed by 143 countries. They recognized the importance of reducing greenhouse gas emissions from food products with high uh, footprints, climate footprints, and they uh, announced that they, every year they will report what they did to reduce its emissions. So this is one of the options they can choose from. Um, so uh, now I would like to give the floor to uh, Michel if he's there, uh, or Laura maybe afterwards, but I don't know if she's there. Thank you very much for listening, and here are the sources. You can visit our website, uh, tapcoalition.eu. I can show it here. You can subscribe our newsletter if you think this is interesting. So thank you very much again. And afterwards, you can ask some questions, but first, uh, we try the online participants to join. Good morning. Am I here? Am I understandable? <laughs> His voice is not too well, sorry. <laughs> he, he told It's me. terrible. Yeah. Michel? Are you there? Here I am, yes, I am here. Welcome, you have the floor. Okay, perfect. Let me start with the slides. Mm. So Good morning, everyone. My name is Michel Scholten, and I will talk to you about true pricing. Apologies for my voice. Um, today, briefly about us, then the problem, affordable and accessible, healthy and sustainable food, the solution, true pricing, true pricing in practice, consumers and true pricing, and finally some reflections and discussions, and perhaps we can do the plenary again when Jerome, you are um, kind of uh, also receiving questions. About us, so we are um, an organization and kind of a movement with 90 people. We work all over the world and we aim to bring true prices everywhere. We see indeed, as Rio Rome was saying, that prices do not reflect the social and environmental costs and therefore we have the tragic situation that it's cheaper to pollute and exploit than to have paying um, to, to pay for the social environmental costs and therefore despite all the good intentions and policies and plans we are not reaching the goals and I dare to say that this is also the underlying problem with the conferences on par of parties of, uh, um, of climate and of biodiversity. Um, so my brief personal take was that um, I uh, have been active in the developing um, sector, development sector, and I, as a teenager, um, collected lots of money. I noticed that the trade agreement that the people that I was trying to help did not um, accommodate a fair um, arrangement. They had to pay a tariff if they export branding or, or brands, chocolate brands, um, whereas if they would export the raw beans, they would receive a discount. And I thought, wait a minute, the prices that they receive is, no, is not some sort of free market, it's actually an arrangement, it's a trade agreement. And um, I also um, saw that the environmental cost, um, they would not be considered if they would internalize them, if they would invest. Invent, uh, invest in more sustainable agricultural practices that wouldn't really pay off. So therefore, um, I embarked on this journey uh, almost 15 years ago. Um, then, the true cost as a problem. Um, well, obviously, we've seen lots of and remarkable uh, growth in the past decades and um, 200 years uh, across the world. It was unequally divided. But yeah, you all know the um, issue that climate is really um, deteriorating. Biodiversity is um, this kind of destroyed and uh, there's more and more people being um, in uh, 
labor exploitation, including uh, enslavement. The ILO's estimate is that 50 million people are in a work situation against their will in a form of enforcement, unpaid, which is striking. And I do um, want to kind of interlink the two. Um, uh, although uh, we are now in particular talking about uh, climate itself. Now we, uh, with the uh, UNFSS, the United Nations um, Food Systems uh, Summit uh, scientific group, uh, developed a research on the true cost of food uh, that was kind of paving the way for the recent FAO reports. And basically we noticed that on the one hand there is a um, huge in affordability and in accessibility problem. More than 3 billion people cannot afford a healthy diet. And on the other hand, there's a huge, call it true cost challenge. And that is that um, there's a huge environmental and also health and um, kind of healthcare cost challenge, as uh, Jerome was already stressing. Of the total expenditures on food, which are approximately 10 trillion US dollars per year, you have to add 200 percent. The FAO uh, reports were closer to 10 percent of the total uh, expenditures in food. These are kind of macro estimates and it depends a little bit of what you consider in scope but nonetheless uh, it just shows that there's on the one hand a need to make food more affordable and on the other hand to make food more expensive and that seems to be like a um, yeah, uh, contradiction. However, we um, need to have the information um, at the uh, choice, kind of the purchase choices, but also any other policy choices that people make, and then make smart policy decisions to systematically reduce these costs. That is what we would offer. Okay. Uh, if you look into the details of this study, uh, we saw that um, there's in particular a huge cost to human life, unhealthy diets. Um, that is due to, as uh, Jerome was saying, the uh, overconsumption, the um, too fat. Uh, too much fat, sugar and salt food. Um, also, um, there's, um, the, for example, World Health Organization that uh, has indicated that uh, there is uh, um, uh, Michelle, health risks related Michelle, to I red meat, to processed meat. So indeed it is linked to uh, those food, um, the, this food consumption that also is... Uh, Michel, I can, uh, can I interrupt and you? So I, I'm, I'm sorry, Michel. Correlation Michel, the two. do we hear me? And the scope of this was actually rather limited. Uh, we only looked into um, greenhouse gas, nitrogen, water pollution, phosphorus water pollution, scarce blue water use, land use and air pollution. So um, there's lots of things that were not even in scope. I now, if I now have to uh, example, to stop the the presentation of Michel, unfortunately, because diet. of time reasons. Um, so maybe there's uh, one question from the audience. I can answer reference this diet. one. Yeah. It's kind of the Lancet reference diet. It is kind of a balanced diet, yes. not necessarily a vegan diet, but just reduce a lot of the intake of processed food, uh, meat. We have a more balanced food. Uh, menu. Uh, thank you, gentlemen. Uh, my name is Satoru Mitsuguchi. I'm writing for agriculture uh, newspapers and magazines. And uh, since I have so many questions, uh, if uh, my I can get my answer through your website, so please say so. First question is uh, when you start your project. Second, how you calculate CO2 in the food. And the third, how do you negotiate with supermarket? And the fourth, how many items are covered by your labelings? And the fifth, uh, who pays for the initiatives? And uh, how do you connect CO2 uh, labeling and uh, dietary guidelines? And, and finally, uh, are you trying to include uh, food and uh, uh, dietary uh, labeling into uh, EU directive? <laughs> That's okay. all. Thank you very much. Sorry, that I think we better have a meeting afterwards that I can explain all the many questions. 
uh, because I'm also running out of time. But uh, yes, we yeah the, the way we make the calculations for CO2 is by giving CO2 uh, a one kilogram of CO2 a price like uh, 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 like hundred euros per, per per kilogram, for instance. And then you you know how much CO2 is linked to one kilogram of meat or dairy, and that's the price you extra pay. But this is just a more technical story how you make the calculations. It can be done in different ways, how you, how you value the, the, the damage of uh, uh, one kilogram of CO2. Uh, but normally the, the, the different methods are similar and it has to become much more expensive than we pay now for our meat and dairy. Yeah, uh, yeah I have to close now, sorry, but we can have a meeting afterwards. And uh, thank you very much for your attention. And uh, on our website is, is so much information, so you can see every answers there as well. But uh, please send me an email or whatever. Thank you very much.